Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, it's hot out there. I mean, it is hot out there. So that means you're all there looking at your TV and you got your tea and, and hey, just rear back now because we're going to have a show. We're going to have a show and it's something that's going to be, it's going to really get to you. We're going to be talking about lead in the water in our school system here in the Portland Public School area. In fact, in the entire state for that matter, everybody's in the uproar trying to figure out what, what, ha- what actually happened to this whole situation. But before I go into that, is that, let me share this. Again, thank you very much for supporting the campaign, uh, uh, my candidacy uh, is for running for mayor aspect of it. As you know, we had some major issues that were on the table that we felt very strongly about the fact that there was going to be a runoff. Unfortunately, some of the folks didn't do their job, and as a result of that, we don't have the runoff. I still feel that uh, the, some of the issues that, uh, that need to be talked about and addressed, if you will, things like the homelessness aspect of senior citizens, the youth, uh, mental illness, things of that nature. Uh, we, I felt that had we had a runoff, we've been able to talk a little bit more about that. That's one of the reasons, one of the major reasons why I ran. And uh, so, as a result of that, since we, since Ted Willer was picked because he, you know, I, you know, he got 51 percent or better of the votes. Uh, now we've got uh, we've got two mayors right now. We got Charlie Hale and we got Ted Wheeler. And then you got a third one sitting out there. His name is Bruce Broussard. We're going to stay on those issues. And we're going to bring up these issues, and we're going to, we're going to, by the way, and for those folks who are out there on the, on the, on the firing line as far as homeless, we're going to be back on the streets with you. We're going to talk with you, and we're going to take your charge because, in all due respect, they need to open up Wapato. They need to open up Wapato. The, the, the county owns it now. The county owns it now. Uh, there are beds there that could be, could be provided for the mental illness and folks of that nature, but unfortunately, they're not doing that right now. So my point, I can go on and on and on, but I want you to, want you to know, hey, we're going to be there. We're going to be there. We're going to be there just like we were there the other day when this, this whole issue of lead came up, and I want to, and right up front with you, and I'm got, we're going to be talking about that today. I just happen to have probably the only person that I can talk to at Portland Public School that can give up the answers. His name is Steve Buell. You've been knowing Steve. He's been on this show many, many times. He's always given us an update on what the school district is all about, and we're, we're just so elated to have him here today. Steve, how you doing, buddy? You're looking great. Well, yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not necessarily right? feeling so great with oh, what's are. been going on. Oh, it's not, gee. It hasn't been a lot of fun. Hey, I, I know it hasn't, buddy. That's why I've got you on the show. That's why it's very important. I mean, I've, I've, seen, I've seen all of the pieces in regards to the how they responded to your question, to the question, to those two meetings that I was at. And uh, I still feel that they didn't do you justice. We're going to do it within an hour here. We're going to have the opportunity, if you will, to to educate us here. And we're going to naturally, we're going to tweak this to everybody around and let them look at what was going on. Because no, we really respect you, buddy, because without you on that board, this thing would have probably been just, it would just slid right under the table and we, no one would have known about it. And this is so, so important because we're talking about mothers and their kids, buddy. I mean, it's, it's sort of an example of, you ever seen a mama bear with a cub and you are riding down the bicycle down the trail and you say, hey, this is a cute little baby, just kind of touching whatever. And you, guess what happens? That mama bear will chase you all the way to the ocean, right? Is that fair? The bottom line is that I'm not, I'm, I'm, this is not a light issue aspect of it, but it's a very serious issue. We're talking about oh, yeah. our, our futures and our kids and whatever. And so that's what we're going to talk about. And uh, but but as we talk about this, we want to hold. We can also take a, an opportunity to give us an update because the board that you have today, these folks have been there for about a year now. We kind of get let, we like to get an idea of uh, uh, what uh, what have we accomplished up to at this particular time, and and what what has been your involvement, and what have you accomplished, what you think you've accomplished during that particular time, and maybe in the, maybe you can reference the budget for that. Norm, this always comes down to money, right? Comes down to money. So what did we do with that money? Maybe an update on uh, all this construction without the pipes. I guess the, hopefully the pipes have been checked on these new buildings, right? We, I don't know whether or not well, now, yeah. now it's been told. 1985 is the kick, kickover yeah, date, 85, 86, yeah, where you put in 
they put in different pipes Indian since pipe, then. Right, so right. if you've been since 85 right. or 86, right. you're pretty much in good shape. Maybe, because they were talking about certified filters. Remember that? Well, you don't need the filters if you don't, have to, if you don't have the lead in your pipes. Well, but, we, I, but now I'm, I'm worried about that, whether or not, mm -hmm. whether or not they got any lead. You, you may, I got problems. You may want to relax I, I better got problems. You may want to relax Well, you got to, sh you got to share with me, you know, because you know, I'm not leaving. To see. I, I will be back. Well, most of the schools that we have were built before 85. Is that what it is? Oh, sure. Sure. Okay. Well, you, all but a couple of them are 50 or more years old. Exactly. So they were all built before they changed the okay. lead soldering in, but everybody, in the pipes. But, but I, I knew somebody that knew about the, the whole issue of making sure that we didn't have lead in those schools. But the people we've known that we fought for, they were called custodians. That was their responsibility. And they got fired. They got laid off. A lot of some of those folks died. I think it was know. around 2007 or you so. You understand what I'm saying? But they were the ones that were responsible. They had they had certified filters and they had to take those lids out. And all of a sudden, I hear from from a very respectful one of your board members saying, "Well, gee whiz, it was about the budget, Bruce. I mean, we, it was kind of the cost, if you will, that type of deal. We were struggling for dollars, and I could see where the dollars went. Then that was the other thing about the two hundred sixty thousand dollars for a superintendent. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. But anyway, we'll get into that." I, I'll give you the floor now. You got the floor, my friend. Let's start off with basically, you, you, we've got this new board. You've been around there for about, a, about, about one year now with this new board aspect of it. What did we accomplish? What did we get out of it? Yeah. Talk to us. Well, I think the major thing we accomplished is that we quit looking at the teachers as the enemy. Mm -hmm. When I first came on the board, which was three years ago, and we went into negotiations, the teachers were the enemy. They weren't involved in things well. They, we weren't consulting them well. So you have three th over 3,000 teachers in the school system. Mm -hmm. They're the day-to-day. -day, they're the people out on the factory floor, so to speak. Yes, they're yes, they're yes. the ki people who are working directly with the kids and the parents. And we were treating them horribly. And so that has changed immensely. The yes. negotiations going on now are much smoother, much... Uh, uh, more above board and and mm -hmm. we're doing much better so that I think that's probably the major change uh, the budget is in two parts so the budget was pretty much done before we got at it and so if there's budget changes that's probably going to come in the next year mm -hmm. uh, down the line so so uh, other things maybe that the board has done, I think there's kind of a, there's a little different, we are, believe it or not, we are better at being open and transparent. <laughs> and, and I think this kind of, this lead thing kind of shows yeah, it, that it sure a little does. bit it from really the does. board. The board wasn't pushing it under, they're mm -hmm. sitting back and saying, okay, we need to do this. We need to get this material out. How well we do it, we'll see, because the jury is still out. Really tomorrow is the big day on the lead. Uh, on the lead issue because tomorrow we're going to begin uh, a clinic which tests children's blood uh, and the next two days we're going to do that and so if children's blood comes out high then that means we need to do some certain things if it's and some people actually in the, in the health system think that maybe it's not going to come out that high and so but how do we trust it? How, how do you well, I mean, the in the health the system. Well, they're going to you bring you your kid it? in, they give them a blood test, and then they tell you what the blood level, the lead level is. So you sh will know tomorrow after those clinics how, how deep the problem actually really mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just two schools oh, no. or five schools. Okay. We've got schools... Uh, how many schools are there in the district? How many? Well, how many there's there? about 78, I guess. 70, okay, and, okay. And so you got... You got some new schools. We got... Supposedly, 51 schools that showed high in levels of lead 2010, 2012, and we had about 45 or so. Now I can't, I wouldn't live and die by these mm -hmm. figures, but these are just estimates uh, that I actually got from other people. I didn't go through all 261 pages and count them. Maybe I should have, but there are about 45 originally back in 2000, 2001 when we did the original, uh, mm -hmm. the original testing that we have records of. Mm -hmm. So. And one of the problems that was reported in the Oregonian was that the filters they put in didn't necessarily take out the lead. Right. Made them. They weren't certified. And and they didn't necessarily work to take out the exactly. lead either. Exactly. Which is unbelievable, really. I mean, it really is. It's unbelievable. You have lead and you put in filters in the water, but they're not. 
They're not really good at taking the lead out. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. But it was being taken uh, out when the custodians were there initially. Well, not, not, not I don't, I've I never seen, one of them. I I, yeah, but I've never guys. seen, yeah, but they, I've never seen that we verified that the original filters, the 2001 ones were what kind they were. Well, that's either. what I thought I heard. I don't know. That's what I, I thought I heard. I, I haven't then. seen that they, they, verified. They, they were making the point about the fact that but, man, they changed the filter because of cost. One of the things was the protocols, though, the original custodians back then, 2000, 2001, they were doing protocols, evidently. Yeah, they Running were Running the water yeah, they were, yeah, they were and checking. following through yeah, and so yeah, forth. They were doing and the so, uh, and I'm sure starting about 2001, it kind of went a little, you know, it wasn't as good the next year and the next year, you know, all those types of things deteriorate to some degree, but well, when they got to 2000, about 2007, and you know this as good as anyone in the city, and they fire all the custodians yep. and they contract in, all the institutional knowledge from every one of those schools is gone, yep. right out the window. Yep. Right. And they didn't go in where I say, oh, you're the new guy, so I'm going to show you the yep. ropes. Yep. I'm going out mad. I'm not showing you jack, yep. that's man. Right. That's right. That's, uh, right. that's the way it is. Yep. Too bad. Yep. And so uh, I'm sure there were exceptions to that, but basically that was, this, that was the way that it worked. And so that was probably, in my uh, guess, that that was one of the key things that happened mm -hmm. at, at the time. So you didn't know to run the water every morning. Mm -hmm. And it was all about costs. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot about costs. All cost. about costs. That's right. right. Well, and then, and then if, if it was all about costs, then what did they do with the money? I.e., all well, of a sudden... Well, they went through that period from about 2008 in there, didn't have any money hardly. So they're cutting every place, cutting teachers out. They're cutting. I think that someone told me, I don't know how accurate this is, that we cut out 72 reading teachers. Mm. 72 reading mm. teachers. Then we came and, up with and, a bond. And we we've got all bond, sorts of kids. All this new construction. Uh, well, we have new construction, <laughs> but that's outside of the money. You can't use that money to buy for reading teachers. But that's what they should have gone. That's, that's, what should, that's what the bond should have been. Well, in my opinion, bond. the bond should have been not on You can't do a bond on reading right, teachers, but, but you can do saying. a bond yes. on uh, uh, infrastructure exactly, in the school system. Exactly, and that's exactly. what I thought at the time, anyhow. Yes, and right. I honestly think that's what we should do with the next bond, mm -hmm. this one coming up. We should go back and and say to the community, we're going to go get this infrastructure. We're going to change the plumbing. We're going to do the electrical work. We're going to do those things that do the... Uh, That's uh, going to be a hard sell, Steve. Well, yeah, but what I'm That's saying... That's going to be a hard, well, the hard bond, bond that The bond that we have now that's the sell is the uh, building three new schools, basically. Yeah, but guess what? That's going to be a hard sell. That's a really hard sell. That's going to be a hard sell. I think it's a little easier hey, sell. With the, it's with, a, with the, with it's the, an easier sell to do about half as much and the, to go actually yeah, after with the, the... With your present staff that you have, type with, stuff. with your present administrative staff that you have, and, and uh, maybe uh, I'd, say, I'd say about two-thirds of your, your board members, your buddies, <laughs> it's going to be a toughie. Well, yeah, of course. Of course it will be. It's going to be a toughie. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't... I personally wouldn't... I don't... I, would, I don't I, think it pass. I, I, I don't I think it'll. I don't think it'll pass. What, there is one little thing though, that it is in their favor. They're being right. my favor, right, right. so to speak, if you look at it and passing the bond. Uh, often the worst Portland public schools does, and the worst things do. The people say, "Geez, I can't." Make it worse yet by not passing the bond. So sometimes that's helpful. Hey, how hey, badly you do. You got. You got my word. Ain't gonna pass. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 right now, I'm not voting for it. There's Would no you vote for a bond no that did the infrastructure? Yeah, if you got rid of the administration, your present administration, <laughs> you're, and some of your board members. holding people hostage oh, on it. Oh, yeah. Hey, well, hey, but, I, I have a hey, tendency. But I don't, I don't I have trust a them at all. I don't trust any of those guys. <laughs> I have I'm a first, tendency. That's why to, I have you here. I, I didn't a, invite anybody else but you. I have you a know. tendency to do... Uh, <laughs> What I think is good for children. So if that's well, bought, I, doing the infrastructure at the schools would be very good for children. Oh, is that right? No, sure. Like I said, w uh, would you agree then that we'd get rid of administration? Is that what you're saying? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you make well, the best we, decisions what, what for children. What would be your consideration? How, how do how do we how do we deal I, with that two hundred sixty thousand dollars? I know that you voted against that stuff. How how did we get there? What was her rationale? There's no way in the world that well, you know, uh, I, I like no, the lady. No, I, I mean, she's a neat lady. Okay? I, I like her. But too. the bottom line, she didn't have the skills. Well, the, no uh, mad the, uh, the way that we got there is the old school board kind of liked the 
smooth things over. That was the way that it worked. It was Politics. smoothing things over. Politics, right? Politics, smooth it over, smooth it over, smooth it over. And they were, you know, basically we were running the school system to smooth it over. Okay. With then, that board and probably the one before it and probably the one before that all the way yeah, back to yeah. about 1990. Yeah. Uh, and then two-thirds today. Well, I don't know if it's two thirds, but we have we we may have some people who are more who are interested in smoothing it over. Yeah, wouldn't surprise the same me. same old deal. Wouldn't surprise <laughs> you. Me. Understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I, know exactly, you know I understand exactly. So, what you're so we're going to really talk about this bond deal. I mean, so so where is that going to go? You think with the with the superintendent piece? I mean, that that was heavy. I mean, a lot of those. There's a lot of people who are calling for her resignation. Resign. A lot, what, of, pe the lot of people. A lot of people. Well, what's the deal on that? Part of the deal is that. Not everybody is calling for a resignation. Like? Like a lot of people in, people of color in the community-based uh, organizations. I represent them. I represent I'm them. talking about no, community-based organizations. <laughs> I represent them. Now, and they're, You're they're getting not, into my arena I don't now. see any of those no, no. people call. I haven't seen any. They, they any, wasn't, even, I, Steve, I they wasn't seen, even at the meeting. Did you notice uh, that? that was, I didn't see. Right, there was only I, one I have one not seen any, anyone in those organizations. Because, Fred, they, every time they've gone to the board, they can't get nothing. Well, I haven't they're, seen they're about anybody problems. in those organi organizations who are in the leadership calling for the superintendents. Why? Because they got problems. No, I don't know why. You <laughs> we need new leadership that, too. that, I'm just saying we need that, leadership that too. I haven't seen that. We need leadership too there. I mean, I, I want to talk. I, I and it's the same with, uh, and, it's, and there are also other areas, for instance, within the school system itself, administrators, principals. I haven't seen any of those people calling for I don't know the that. superintendent's resignation. I, I, I don't I'm know. just saying that if you ask me how I think it really I think is, I think what I'm saying is there. it's not like everybody in town. There are places where Carol Smith has incredibly strong support, even after this. But they're all on the dole. No, you, you put it. They're all on the dole. Steve, you, you do Steve it, they're all on the you, dole. You I'm talking about the kids. I'm talking about the kids. They're right. not on the dole. I mean, they're there to get an education, man. I mean, and they're failing. You know, it's tough. The teachers depends like to on say, the school the you're teachers, in. Some schools are great. Some are right. fans. Which one? Some are the, struggling. The ones up in Southwest Portland. Those are probably the pretty ones good. The ones in Southwest Portland. Those are pretty good. Huh? Generally, generally those are pretty good. The ones up ones, in right. North, Northeast, and mm -hmm. Southeast Portland. Some of them are struggling. I mean, some, uh, they're struggling. I'm not just talking about black ones. I'm talking We're about white talking ones about too. Poor everybody. folks, right? You got me. You know what I'm saying? That's right. So no, I don't disagree. Do they have any leadership? They don't have any leadership. Do they have any leadership? That's leadership why, that's why in terms of in terms of you have to define what you would think. Well, my, the way I define it is that I didn't see that many poor mothers complaining the other those two those two scheduled meetings about the lead at those at those meetings. That was a tough. You understand what I'm saying? Because in all due respect, they've given up. They say, hey, they're not going to listen to me, Bruce. They could care less about my kids. That's what I. That's the, I can get some mothers now. And they can say that, but they're it's scared. Hard, it's hard for me to stereotype. Well, I don't People stereotype that, anyone. That you know way, that, that way, it's, but, This is live yeah, TV I right know, now. But I mean, it's hard for me to stereotype. It's a serious issue. It's an issue. And that they're given up. Uh, I, I no, have a lot of no, no. Mom haven't money. gotten up. No, they haven't got given up now in, in in many ways. But the leadership aspect of it. I mean, it's it's a frustration. They're looking at what's going on. They're getting ready to come on and and talk about this issue. But the fact of the matter is, they've been there so many times. They're just tired. But when you hit that kid, I mean, really, really hit that kid about the fact this is going to have an impact on their learning abilities, the kidneys, on the medical, and their whole nine yard. And some of them even thinking about, what about my kids that's, that's not there now? Yeah, they, they're going to school. Down. I mean, just back. Steve, what, what, what happens if there's a class action suit? Would, would you, would this I honestly don't know. It's a, very serious, it's a very serious question. And it's one that, and I don't know the answer to it. Uh, if that's you get a class gonna... action suit, I don't know exactly what our our uh, uh, responsibility is in that case. Is that going to how that's going to come out? I'm hoping that's that heavy. one of the things that one of the things that's kind of taking place is kind of to some degree the school district administration and the school board in a way also has kind of prioritize let's get the water out to the schools let's get the kids tested and let's see where we need to go from there and so class action suits are a little bit down the line you know pretty busy they lay they the the superintendent uh, laid off the head of the facilities and uh, 
and uh, that guy was kind of basically but that's after safety those two guy. meetings. And no, those, but what I'm those, saying those is, two meetings what I'm saying happened. is that would never have happened. But it, right, but what I'm saying is everybody in the school system is almost overloaded now, going forward in trying to make the schools work at the end of the year. That's why I don't have some of the answers because I haven't asked those questions yet. Plan to ask them, but I'm going to ask them after you have a little bit of time to make sure the kids are taken care of. Well, I think that's priority one, wouldn't you think? Kids taken care of. Priority, priority one. one. Right, right. Right. And you're so busy everything doing that. Go, hey, let's, everything let's else is done. But I'm going to be asking those questions. I can appreciate that. But you, you understand bet. what I'm saying? Because I'm a grandpa. I got, I, got, I got grandkids in these schools, you know, Peninsula and whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned. And I want that taken care of yesterday. I mean, they, they dropped the ball on this piece aspect of it. People who have the monies and whatever and whatever, they heard Flint, Michigan the first day it came out. Yeah, I can, you can rest assured there were some schools, I'm sure, that were checked out big time. I haven't heard about them. But I'm just saying. Just the two, the, two, the, the, the three that they did were parent initiated. Okay. The Creston Access and, and yeah, you Lewis. Got, you got Lewis some, is not any yeah, you got some smart folks. I think you're going to have some, very, some very interesting people running for office now from now on on the school board. Mm, it's very possible. I think, I'm I think sure. So. There's going to be a lot of moms. I already heard one is running against me. There you go. There's going to be some moms now, but there's going to be some moms. And, and, I, and God bless them all for doing that. I mean, I'm sure we have we, we have uh, we have what, what is a uh, home home dads and this that and the other, but but the moms now you got the attention, and I'm I'm glad these are very sharp women. These people, it's kind of like the baby boomer era type, uh, as far as that, as far as they're 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 now the middle class type. They're there in all these communities. See, Portland is changing quite a bit, and I think that's for the good, if you will. Let's talk about yourself. What what do you think you've done? In, in, in during this year that you felt good about? Well, I felt really good First, about... What have you introduced? Well, I felt really good about this work that I've done around getting the teachers involved, back involved in the school system, and I felt, I felt real good about pushing to take care of some of the serious problems we've had around principals, to no longer be willing to accept the idea that a principal is a little dictator and can treat their teachers and their and the parents and so forth in a in a, a very negative manner, and we had a, we had principals doing that. So what what and, happened to them? What, well, give me an some example. Of, some of them. What's the end, so what's the end result? Some, some of them, the end result is you get a, this principal's gone, and in comes a principal that's better, hopefully. And also, can you cite the school? Well, I don't think it's really. Well, I think that's you pretty good it. stuff. I mean, can, yeah, let well, the people know got, what you did. Both you know? well, yeah. of them been in the news. The main, two of the main ones. Well, but you've also got other ones that are. Uh, I kind of have this thing about not pointing at particular employees. I don't think it's my job that I should, that I should be doing that. But yeah, you know, people who pay attention, they know what schools I'm talking about. Okay. And they and 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 it's an attitude too. Before this new school board came on. The attitude was, parents complaining, must be something wrong with the parents. That's right. Now the attitude is, parents complaining, we need to look at it. And I really believe that that has been changed. That's what you were doing. The rest changed. of it, that's what I said, I two think that, but I that's think it's you changed. were doing. But, but I think it's changed. had the same attitude. It's changed in the administration. What? That has changed. Yes. That has changed. To some degree, it hasn't changed as good as it should, but it's really improved a lot. A lot, and so and and so I think that's important. Uh, one of the things, uh, a couple of things that I specifically got, like in the last budget that I worked at, and I feel real responsible for getting. One is changing the library system, so that we now have certificated libraries and librarians in all our was schools. A, was and, but, and that was kind of to end of the end. Yeah, and we got yeah. got some money into libraries, but I couldn't get them I couldn't get the superintendent really or necessarily my fellow board members to understand that you want to, that how what a focal and important role with the library the right. libraries are all my colleagues yeah. or I think there are people who do understand that but what a focal role a library plays in and mm -hmm. particularly in elementary school mm -hmm. or a middle school I mean that's where kids get the new books to read and there's tons of great books that come out every year that we should be replacing and you lose some you should be replacing them mm -hmm. the library Library is the focal center in the school, mm -hmm. and I've, I've got, I finally got them to get, to give each library six thousand dollars to buy books, which was about four hundred books. And every library in the city okay. finally, but they took it out of the principal's budgets. The principal should have been buying them anyhow. Okay. But taking it out of the principal's budget was a different ball game. 
Uh, and I'm not sure every principal is happy about that because mm -hmm. they like to spend their own budget the way they want. But we had $5.4 million that we give to principals to spend where they need it in their school. It's called the consolidated budgets. And the last time, that amount of money, we spent 19000 out of $5.4 million for library books. So they weren't buying them. Where it was ha what was happening is, up, this is what I assume was happening, up in the areas where you have a little more well-to-do people, you were, the PTA was giving them money for library books, mm -hmm. and the, what they had, the, the scholastic book sales, mm -hmm. you know, you you're familiar with those. So you have the parents in the PTA yeah. who can buy those. Yeah. And so in a little well-to-do school, more well-to-do, you're getting a better library. If you're in a poor school, you don't have the parents in the PTA with all that money given Why is it, it so? Why is it so? Well, people have less money to Get yeah, but who's to responsible to make sure that they educate the people and get, put the books there in the classroom? Well, that's what I've started to do. Finally, they said, okay, we need to do what this. About the we folks? need to do this. I don't know. I, I I did get it past the school board, so there were people who voted for it. Pretty much, I think pretty much everybody voted for that in the end. But I would have liked to have had them establish a line with the idea that yes, you every year you work on those libraries. About a half a million dollars is the minimum you should give important public schools to libraries. So that's one of the things. Uh, another thing that, that I pretty much um, uh, got them to work on is they had a, one of the problems that we've had for years is that we don't have very good multicultural, culturally centered curriculum. In fact, in some schools, we're hardly teaching any history in the elementary schools, let alone multicultural, let alone mm -hmm. talking about. It. So kids study history, they don't see themselves in it. And so, and it's a critical, important thing. Oh, very much but, so. But if you go talk to teachers, and if you know, well, you know, I taught 40 years, I know, you don't have the time to do during the school year, you're so busy, it's unbelievable, and you don't have the time to develop new units and add in all this stuff that you should be adding in. So you have to make it so you're able to do that. And one of the things that I've got them finally to do, which I've worked on for years, is to set up a, a website run by the Portland Public Schools where these resources and materials are put on that website. And so teachers can easily go or they can you have somebody, a historian archivist in charge of it, and you can call that person and say, hey, well, what about, can you give me some stuff on the Chinooks who, you know, 50,000 Chinooks right here, and we don't... I'm, I want to do a unit on them, or, or people can put up their own lesson plans. You can do books. That what are the best books and so forth for, to use around kids of color and da da da, you know, and all that stuff comes up. And now you, once that gets going, you can now go out to teachers and say, teach this stuff, because before, if you said teach this stuff, what happened was, they go. No, I, mean, I don't have a time to do put all this together, do all the research. I don't know it. I don't have it a background necessarily. On and on and on. So this gets us. It's the first step in getting started. We also did a nice thing. The board did. We're going to have year after next. We're going to have an ethnic studies program in every in every high school. Hmm. And that came a lot from the alley group. Uh, there was a group of kids pushing on it. But boy, the first time I heard, it, I went, "Wooing bingo, great idea!" Hmm. And that got pushed through Mike Rosen did a lot of the work there and we that came through and then uh, the last thing that I kind of got in the budget was somebody who goes out and recruits well for teachers there's a lot of teachers types of teachers that are really hard to get advanced math teachers teachers who speak foreign language believe it or not it's hard to get teachers of color uh, and because there's a competition going on and so what I've Going to, what they're finally going to set up, which I've talked about it since 1980 actually, is somebody who goes out and recruits the hard to find teachers and treats them and recruits them in, you know, takes them out to dinner, buys them a steak. That's what happens if you want somebody. You tell them, we want you in Portland Public Schools, and you do it early enough in November so that. Uh, so that when they do the transfers, which is in the spring, teachers decide where they want to transfer to the openings, which is in the contract. Once all those teachers have transferred, then you have this cohort of teachers that are solid teachers that you can now 
choose from to fill the holes that are left. You don't have to go looking for those teachers after all the other 17 mm -hmm. school districts in, this, in the whole Portland area have already mm -hmm picked them off because mm -hmm. they've been beating us. So those are some things that, that, I, that I thought that I'm taking a little credit for on those. Okay, at least. good, good, good. But like I said, we're going to take a short break, but, okay. but my answer, one, one of the questions in regards to trying to, trying to get the get that history in that classroom aspect of it, right now we're still in that, that kind of, a, we, 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 we enjoy the, the idea of having discussions around racism. See, and like you said, if you can put implement your situation in the classroom, maybe we can get away from this as much as possible. See, right now it's just still racism. Everybody enjoys it. It, it, it divides us and all kinds of weird things. We shouldn't even have it at this point in time, especially in the 20th century aspect of it. Got me? But anyway, we'll take a short break and we'll come back and we'll ask you a few more questions. Okay. Sounds good. Take a short break, folks. We'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks. Again, I'm Bruce Broussard, your host here at the Oregon Voters Digest. My guest today is, you know, you might have known for some time about we're so excited about that. Ever since he got elected, things have been changing at the school school district, Portland Public School for that matter. And uh, But it's a tough task. He's just one guy. I don't know how many cohorts he's got there with him. It's, it's, a, tough, it's a tough sell, you know what I'm saying? But two-thirds, and we still got... But I know there are some others out there now, especially after this lead thing. They're going to be running for office. Just don't run for his office. Well, you have Paul yeah, Anthony yeah. on here, too. He was, he's been great. I know Paul. Yeah, I know Paul. Yeah, he's that's, been great I said two-thirds. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't yeah, say that's yeah. a third. Paul is a good yeah. guy. And he's, there's he's a, a lot guy. of people been he's doing good. some good work. No, 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 no. Don't get over two-thirds. No, you're fine on that. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, I got Steve here, and we've been talking about um, uh, the last year, the, you know, as far as the school board is concerned. they got a whole year. They've been on there for a year. We've been talking about the budget. We've been talking about a number of things, and uh, naturally, lead is the most is really at the top of the line. We're going to probably bring that back to the table, but but we were just going through the whole issue of how do we educate? You know, how do we how do we get things together, if you will, uh, as as opposed to this ESL stuff and this, that, and the other. We got to get people together, get American people together. We got Americans across the board, and and that history has not been taught in the schools. It's not been taught in school, but, but Steve's got, a, got some good ideas. He's been talking about this stuff. Check out the last 30 minutes. Go back and check it out again. You can check it out on Tuesday or Thursday or on YouTube, uh, Oregon Voters Digest, no problem. You know, one of the problems when you're talking about the whole educational system in Portland, yeah. and it is, I'm sorry, I've said it many, many times, and it is the major problem. When you set up a school system, you start with the classroom, the school, yeah. and then you develop administration to support the school, right. and then you go to the wraparound programs, which is a lot of the good community-based organizations that give you good help with the parents yeah. and doing, and and you put them in, and you fit it around the school. Well, no, what no, we've done no, is so the reverse. That's right. Exactly. We have the exactly. schools supporting yeah. the administration, but it's right. not. It's beyond even the administration. It's also the Oregon Department of Education with their testing programs and all that stuff which people are kind of saying ah, but no that's still there big time it's still disruptive it's still uh, and we're asking our teachers instead of to teach children to go with these different types of approaches and so forth and so forth it's it, and it's reversed and it's the singular most important thing to learn and to change important public schools you go out to some there are small districts around that that really focus around build their administration around the school we we need to learn to do yeah, that they got the money well it did, uh, but it doesn't they the still money. do it they yeah, still do it you know you a lot of smaller oh, districts that are pretty good districts because they put the kids up first, front but, that's right. but what happens exactly. is as it, as the district grows and they have all these other things that come into play exactly. then it gets in the way exactly. and it gets in the way big time exactly. in portland I, exactly. it's been the most disappointing aspect that i haven't been able to change that culture yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody says we're for the kids but then let's go back 
put the schools together, decide what we want in them, and then decide what we need to support what we want in the schools instead of the reverse. Right, right, and right. we're doing the reverse still, yeah. and, it's, and it's very frustrating. Yeah, yeah, I know it is, but hang in there. Got to hang in there, Steve. Let's go back to the to the idea of the books and whatever into the libraries and whatever, which is very, very important. They're not into the classroom, per se. I mean, as far as the as far as something specific, as far as the issues or whatever. But let's, let, one area that came out, I read this article in the in the Tribune, the whole issue on global warming. Warning. Oh yeah, it's a big, it's a big yeah, issue. You, you, first off, one define what what uh, what we're talking about in terms of global warming, the book aspect. Well, of I'll it. tell you what and we how did. How did we get to the table, and wh why did we? What, at the end result, why did we end up with what we got? What what came about is that when you looked at our textbooks, they were way outdated. They were talking about uh, maybe global warming doesn't exist. Well, that's an argument you could make. And it's still out there. And it, it's still out there, but it's not... You don't want to, that's not where your textbook should be talking. Your textbook should be talking about global warming and the problems and what it looks like from a more, much more scientific viewpoint. And so what came about was, a, was well, for one, re, one thing, Mike Rosen is a pretty good environmentalist on the school board, and he was really very instrumental in bringing forward the resolution that, were, that said, let's update these textbooks. That's basically what it said. It didn't say ban all the books in the library. It didn't say don't discuss anything. It said let's update these textbooks because they're really out of date. And let's, let's, we were handing textbooks to kids that say, well, maybe global warming exists. Maybe, maybe. A lot of people don't think it does. That's the textbooks we're doing. Well, it's not a very accurate so what, so what was his, what was his? Well, what David, what we basically said is let's do two things. One is to get rid of the material in those textbooks that's that's not accurate at all, really. But who and, makes that determination? And well, the, that determination is basically made by the school district in the end, obviously. Oh. And the second thing is, and they make the determination on all the curriculum. I know that. I mean, they make the determination <laughs> on everything. What smart. you want to do is make a good right, right, curriculum. Right, 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 you right, want to have right. a good curriculum. Okay, you want to have okay. it be accurate. And you want to have it back it up with scientific data. And da da da. I mean, you want to and the. And the second thing that they did is said, okay, let's have a curriculum that that teaches people about what's taking place in in around the global warming issue. Okay. That's what they said, and you have to tell you have to trust people to do that well. Is uh, hopefully, a, is it will. still a balance in terms of pro and con. There's the, no the balance. Issue, That's the, the deal. Yeah, about the issue was there. But yeah, there's still. Oh, I was got. I'm okay. loaded with. I loaded with people sending me emails telling what how horrible it is that you're doing this and so forth. But there's. But it's emails not, like what you say doing this is a well, I get specific, emails from people specific. who are saying global warming doesn't exist and you guys are banning books and da da and you're you know people kids need to have both sides of the issues mm -hmm. nobody's arguing whether kids need to have both sides of issues and nobody's banning books what they were saying is let's update those books that's the way I voted for it I don't think the language was as clear but that's what you know, that's it just it's what they what we did was a really good thing to so, do. So what what are the kids going to be getting? What what, what are they going to get? Well, they're going to get more accurate information. They're going to have people talk about global warming, you know, about at least what's taking place, you know. Uh, and it's you get people who who's going who's, who's going to make those determinations. Well, you're going to have you're going to have your science teachers are going to make those determinations in the end. Are they going to be sharing? Are they going to have public hearings? And I have no idea. I don't think they'll do public hearings. Well, don't you think that should be something? I mean, here we go with the lead thing again. You know, no, you I don't think. Something. No, no, I don't. I don't think it's that it's that type of an issue. Yeah, I think well, there's man, a, that's, that's you got you can do it. Issue. You that's can a it, major stuff. Yeah, but it's not. It's not. It's not really. There's there's a lot of there's religion say who say that. Uh, Dinosaur, dinosaurs are only 4,000 years old. Mm -hmm. We're not teaching that in our schools and saying, okay, we're going to teach that the dinosaurs are, and we're not going to give that equal weight with the, the scientific uh, community that's huge portion of the scientific community. You probably could find and say, oh, yeah, the dinosaurs. Or same with the Grand Canyon. It's only 4,000 years old. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. We're not giving that. We're, we balance that. There's nothing wrong in the schools to say there are people who believe this. This is why they believe it. 
of course you should say that if you wanted to. I mean, if that was part of the, uh, uh, if that's part of the curriculum, but it's not, we're not going to take that and give it equal weight with, I mean, that's, but, but that's, that, that's kind of, that'd be kind of, but I, but I'm, that'd what, be a little I'm, off. That's not a particular. But what I'm hearing, the discussion is around the table when you're picking these books up anyway, right? Regardless. The discussion is still there. Oh, right. oh, yeah, I get all sorts of emails from people telling, you know, that, hey, here, such and such and such and such. Is there a committee set aside? Are you, are you, the, you the chair? There is, the no, there is a committee that's going to work on the curriculum and what, what, the, what going forward from that resolution. Who chairs that committee? Who chairs that committee? I don't know. Who, I don't think it's been set up yet. On the school board? So okay. I don't so know. That, it's that, not going to be a school board committee, I wouldn't think. I think it'd be, I think we'd probably bring in the science teachers. The science teachers? Sure. For okay. science teachers to do okay. it. Once you stop, it, 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 it's something like in a way. It's not like this equal issue. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not an equal issue. People have their feelings about right. it and stuff, but it's not an equal issue. It's like the dinosaurs. It's not an equal issue that they're four thousand years mm -hmm. and dinosaurs were on Earth four thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. Not an equal mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. But but like you said, the, the issue needs to be uh, what needs to, what, you, done what, fairly because if you got folks that to be are done on the fairly. other side of the line, that's right. you want to bring everybody to sure. the table. That, that's, that's a fair, right. that's a fair yeah. analogy, right? Yeah, you want to do it in a fair manner, yeah. and you want to do it based on basically on the best science that you have. Nothing in science gets totally done by yeah. you, you know. It's totally science is. Is something where there's always argumentation around yeah, yeah. that, and so. But far. you do agree that um, we, we have a presidential race right now, and that and that issue is a major divide piece. I mean, I, I hope we don't get sucked up. And obviously, we so are. So Trump be, Trump uh, thinks that there's no such see, thing see, as global you, warming see, or you, something. You, you brought it out first. See, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't bring yeah, it out. I didn't say anything about Hillary. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I might look at the go. server. I might get the server. I don't really. Yeah, I'm kind of worried <laughs> about people who think that there's no. Yeah, but, but, there's no global warming but you going do agree. On, maybe. You do agree. That's politics. Well, yeah, but politics. But, 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 but you, politics you, needs to be. Politics does not should not be controlling, like the science curriculum or the English curriculum. I, I, it, it's a. It yeah. It has an. It has a play in it, and you should teach about that. But it doesn't. Can, shouldn't be controlling how what you're teaching in your schools. Politics shouldn't control what you teach your schools. Not in science, not but, your but, science or your but, history. But at this history. moment, but at this moment, they they do have a, the camera, you know, right? I mean, sure. It, it, it's well, a, you know, you can go back to Vietnam War. Yeah. We teach about the Vietnam War. Which side are you on? I mean, it's still there's still people that will maintain that Vietnam War was a good. We're fighting communism and so and there and there's most people are saying no, it wasn't a very good war. But so which so when you're teaching it, and I taught, I have a my degrees in United States history. My master's degree is, and I taught United States history in the schools, and I taught a lot of world history. When you're teaching it, you talk it through and teach it through. You talk, you, you teach it in a way that is fair mm -hmm. and is sensible based okay. on the best that you can do. Okay, 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 that, that's fair. And that's what, and that's, the, and all I'm saying is that there's, there was kind of an overreaction to the fact that they're banning books. No, I wouldn't vote to ban a book out of the library. Are you well, kidding? How did that, how did that come about? That. I mean, that interview, well, it that came interview, about that's because... That's what the interview said. I, mean, I know, I know, that, that, I know. That, that, I, that, it came about because the people didn't, A, read it carefully, I think, and B, they made there was a little language that could bring you to think that but that's nobody's who was interviewed to get, who, who, who was interviewed where, where did they get this response from i don't know who i haven't read that or i haven't read you that article that? in the portland tribune yeah, that, that's, a, that's fact, a, i'd like to read that yeah you, you can definitely have yeah, it yeah, yeah you know yeah. and it, it's kind of a uh, okay so so that's an issue that hopefully you can maybe get back to us on it look like it's something that needs to be discussed look like hey it's it's right up to read there. it it's huge is, is a huge, it's still a huge piece. Now, one of my other, again, we're still talking about what are some of the other things that you would, you've done over the past year that you felt real good about? Maybe what about, what, maybe what, what about they, one of the greatest they fights? They did a what couple, one of the, uh, didn't get approved? well, the biggest fight that I didn't get yes. approved was pre really probably the library books. The library Even though books. I got the big library book budget in there, it didn't go in in the right place. So that was kind of the big, one of the things that we were working very hard on which uh, is the uh, a couple things, but one is the adoption, a new language arts adoption. Mm 
Arts adoption. Language arts adoption. Language English, arts English adoption. English adoption. Okay. For okay. our, uh, and that, we have a new person by the name of Chris Rousseau, who I think is very good, who's doing, he's now the, the director of teaching and learning. So he, okay. And he's new, and he has a lot better feel for elementary school, in my opinion, and I think he's a pretty sharp guy. And so we're doing an adoption for language arts. Well, you want to make sure we we've struggled teaching reading in our schools. I for can a couple. see. I, I, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so he's coming in with a lot a lot of new things, saying, okay, we should be doing this and this. and I and I think most of the stuff he's talking about is really is good. It's good. And so, getting that set up has been a big part of what I've kind of had an interest in. For instance. Generally, we've done a lot of teaching to the center. We didn't do as good a job as we should be doing in the classrooms with kids who are struggling. And also on the other side, I mean, TAG is a huge issue. Uh, talent and Gifted is a huge issue in Portland Public Schools. And so this is hopefully going to help both ends of the spectrum, the new adoption. And they put it together. They just didn't buy one adoption from one publisher. They put several different material sets of materials together and I think that's going to help a lot uh, to do that but but what happened we, we didn't get the money to do it every place we're only doing it in 10 schools and so what we did we said okay we're going to do a pilot program and we're going to look and see how it works because there were a lot of people coming forward who were upset about are we going to teach it's a it's the old phonics everybody, whole language. Yeah, yeah, the phonics. Are yeah, we going to teach yeah. the phonics well? And the answer is the answer. It appears to me, and I'm looking real hard at it. Is yeah, yeah, we are going to teach that point because you have to do that to get kids to read. They got to be able to read the words in order to read. And so, and I think we're on top of that. I'm real pleased. But what I wasn't pleased about was, it's it was too limited in scope what we did, because we didn't really. That didn't get the money from the superintendent to do the adoption in a broader. I thought we needed to do it in a broader way. We did it in ten schools. Well, it's pretty expensive. The other thing that we messed up on uh, with the adoption is that we had already started the six through twelve, mm -hmm. and already we're down the line on it. So you kind of have to finish it. Well, that's you shouldn't be. You should be doing the the elementary school. Yeah. For, uh, first, not so. not the, not the high school and the, I mean middle school because it's a different ball game there. You don't the adoption's different. You needed to, and and so we were already so far down the line that the new guy coming in, Rousseau, kind of had to finish that up, which meant you t were taking money from the little kids to do it. So we come up with a pilot program, and it sounds good, but really, basically, what happened was we were short of money. Yeah. Well, you short know, short of money. That, so that's a that's a big. That's a that's, and I'm I'm really, I really like the work that they've done. We involved a lot more people. We involved people from uh, the ESL departments and uh, special ed for the first time, having them work together so we could have them look at that. So they really did a nice job. In, in the end, I think it will be, I, I'm hoping it will be successful. Well, you, you mentioned the point, in fact, you mentioned the piece that I was going to throw on the table. I think one of the problems we've had is the major confusion. We've taken out the base, if you will, for our entire society by basically coming up with this English as a second language. It should have been English as a first language and then, and then taught, uh, i.e., the various cultures accordingly. But this whole mindset that English as a second language, all of a sudden people are kind of like, doing their own piece. Hey, I'm promoting my own culture, and I could care less about anybody else. I mean, well, then, you know English, yes, I understand what you're saying. but the first language, not English as a second language. But the name, That's itself, the, melting pot. the name itself is not what's taking place. Yeah, we're but, trying but, to teach. But the district We're created. teaching children English. No, but they English. Got, they got, no, it's English and as a the, second language. They're I know, but that's just that. the name of it. No, Actually, but, now they're calling English language learners. No, but, but ELL still, but is the ESL different. is still sitting there. Well, sure, English and ESL it shouldn't be. But that's not how they're looking at it. The school district doesn't approach it that well, way. Well, why don't they just say English as a first language? Because they, they haven't approached it. They say English language learners, that's, but ESL, that's where, that's where we came it's in from. there. It's that's, in there. That's where you and I came from, English as a first language. Well, the, right? Right? I, I right? don't think, 
That's why you, you're, you're so we've got there. We've got problems in the school district around ESL, but it's not because it's got this idea that we're not teaching hey, kids English. Hey, they, they don't want to speak in I'm just being very honest with you. You know, in all due respect, I never saw that when I was growing up that all oh, this ESL, and the English as a second language aspect of it, you know, do speak in Spanish. I think a lot of kids are confused. I think that's where we are now politically. We've got I, a problem in this country with reference to Mexican I, America. I don't they have think, some major, major problems. I don't think that the school district is doing... Uh, it, it, it has it starts, that, I don't think they have that attitude that oh, you're yes. discussing. Big time. No, I don't think their attitude is we shouldn't be teaching kids English. That's not their attitude. Everybody in the school system knows that. The problem is, are we doing a good enough job with that? That's the problem. Now, the immersion, Portland's really got really pretty good immersion. And the immersion stuff does that. And kids do come out of there doing very well in English and doing very well in whatever other language. But a lot of times it's Spanish. Key, but it's a lot. No, that's what I'm telling you. That's not the case. Huh? That's their... That's not the case that they're allowing children to speak Spanish and not learn English. That's not that doesn't take place any place in our school system. They're not that doesn't take place any place. Uh, no understand? matter what they call it, it doesn't uh, take place. Understand what I'm saying? They got the ESL. English as a second language in the school. They get taught, if you will, but they're taught Spanish. No. As well as English. Well, if you're in the immersion then program. Saying, the immersion. Then but, when they get out, in all due respect, when they get out on the street, they go, well, they, guess what? They speak Spanish. I mean, uh, that's No, it. that's not the case, is what I'm telling you. It's it, it's not the case. They In those immersion programs, you're speaking English and Spanish. And if you come in speaking Spanish, you're learning English. If you come in speaking learning or er, speaking English, you're learning Spanish. But you know how difficult it is to learn both languages without comprehension, because that's the key. Comprehension, but it's, man. But the, you know, that's the immersion program. If you don't, if you don't get comprehension with English, you you can't interpret. But the, the they, that's all done in the immersion programs. But I'm saying you at the end of the day, it's not there. The it's immersion confusion. programs, it you is. You can't do it's, both. Well, I'm just telling you. You can't you, be I don't, a competent English person. We're a wrong ways and, away uh, on this Spanish one. speaking person. It, it yes, you can. It All sorts of people are competent in you both languages. you got to be kidding me. Tons of people I mean, I can, are. I can go out right now. I can take you out to soap right now. And they say, what are you talking about? Tons of people who go through those. When you go through those immersion programs, you're coming out basically competent in both languages. Oh. And there's tons of people who are, okay. speak a second language. Well, we, we will agree to disagree. On that. Well, okay. We need to talk about that. What I'll do, I'm going to bring me some Latinos sitting up here, and we'll ask them. Who've person. gone through the immersion program. Yeah, no problem. Bring them over. Who've gone through the immersion yeah, I'll bring program. Them over. Bring them over. Yeah. Comprehension, right. why they don't know. they got problems. You can't do both. See, at the end of the day, it should be speaking this language, i.e. American English, fluently. We're teaching children to do that. They can't do both. But where we're having problems with it is not what you're talking about in the immersion programs. That's where we're doing a good job. Where we're having problems in it is this. Children come into this country who speak foreign languages, okay? Okay. And we take them, if they're from the sixth grade on up, Basically, They're, they don't get into immersion programs. They've already done that. You put them in a regular classroom where you have the teacher all day, then those children will pretty much get a lot of English and will move in those directions in a regular classroom if they have the teacher all day. But if you're in like the seventh grade or eighth grade and you come in, say, suppose you come in from Syria and you speak Farsi and you're in the eighth grade. What we do with those children is two things, and and neither one of these works. And one is to we just toss them in a classroom and expect them to catch up. Well, you can't do that because you got to teach them English. You have to do that. Yeah, that was the workable way. And, you know, and, and, and you have that. to do it. We just never had you that toss much. them in. You toss them in, and you and, and you don't teach they, them any English, and they end up coming out in the end, not knowing very good English. Because you haven't taught them English. You have to take a period of time and teach them English to begin with. And we that's what we don't do well. well you, you, we have what you, they call a newcomer program. And the newcomer program is set up for only like 35 kids. And so you could come in, come into Portland and you speak no English. And you toss them in a classroom. And the teacher speaks no Farsi. And you don't understand anything that's going on. And you, people say, well, yeah, pretty soon you will. Yeah, when you're 35. Yeah, but guess what? We need way? to teach them. We need I, to I, teach I'm English I, right up. I'll give you a good example. And these kids have gone through the schools. 
And I, well, and they, not, give me somebody time. who's coming I'm, in the seventh no, grade or I'm eighth grade. About, they've not, gone through the seventh, the whole nine. Not, years. not in no, the, no, not in the little kids. No, the little no, no, kids, you no, can no, do no, it. I'm talking about even it's after, older kids. Okay, they have to. They walked in all, the eighth grade. All say, I'm they're saying, fourteen years old. I'll give you a good example of that. Fourteen year old kid comes in the system. Okay. When I see these young people waving Mexican flags in these political media, these are kids that were grown up. They grew up here. Went through the whole system. They're pushing their culture. That's not going to help them out. That's going to be a glass ceiling up there. But if they were, if they were accepted, if you will, in the in the English language, English as a first language aspect, of then you got to teach them. That, that. And yet, then the schools need to teach them English. Well, that's what I'm saying. You need to reverse they that piece. To, they got to get that piece in there and say, that, no, it's but English what as I'm a telling you is that it's in there in the immersion program. It's now it's changed. and it's pretty much in there. It's if true. you want to look at it that way, and if and it's now in there decently well, but not great in the lower grades, where it where we're having the problems is, which is one of the things that I was working, I've been working hard on. And you asked me what I didn't get. This is what I didn't get. We okay. need to. A kid comes in from a foreign country and speaks, let's say, the Somali language. Right. All right. So we take him and we put him in a physics class. Does the kid understand anything? No. And we give them a half an hour a day to work with them. But math That's, is, that didn't even come close to but, it. Well, you would agree, math is math. That's not the wrong area. That, that's the wrong area. You know, math is math. No, it's not. Well, you still got to understand the, I mean, a lot got of the some language. Side effects. I you got to do the language. The teacher's going to uh, yeah. is talking in English yeah, when you yeah, do yeah. it. If you don't one understand one any is still English, two. You know, but if you don't understand any English, you can't understand what that teacher's saying. Yeah, but you're teaching them two languages. In the immersion, you're missing what I'm saying. What I'm saying is when you get to a certain point and you come in, not as a little child, but as a 14-year-old or a 13-year-old or a 15-year-old, we don't teach them English so that they can then go out and get their education. And so they end up with no education that's even close to what the kid who comes into the system Doing I, English, I, I and think, there are kids, and we need I to think, deal with them. I, think I didn't we, get I think, any of it. I think they agree. I guess the confusion I'm having is, is that when you when you're telling this kid it's English as a second language, it's saying, okay, no, fine, it's my country first. You caught up in the it's name. My country first aspect of it. you know this kind of. Thing. Well, you can be caught up in the name, yeah, 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 but I not caught. Right. We're not. I can tell you, Portland Public Schools ain't caught up in the name. All right. Well, good. You stay on that deal then, okay? No, I'm going to mm-hmm. stay on trying to get them to actually teach children who come in. We've got hundreds of children who've come in from foreign languages, okay, from good. foreign countries, and having problems. And and having problems. That's right. And what? And instead right. of actually dealing with those problems, they're not. They just kind of. We're pushing them on, and right. we're doing a little bit we'll of work. Stay there. I, okay. Yeah. Steve, this has been great. It's always a pleasure. You got me? You did good? Yeah, I enjoyed it. Just hang up. in there. Please hang in there, will you please? Take care of the lead problem, would you? I don't want Uncle Bruce to go down there again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, good. Thanks again. Appreciate it. Folks, thank you very much. As you can see, you got to get involved. And please, those parents, I mean, hey, well, talk to your principal. Ask them the question. Ask them the question. And Steve is doing the best he can on those school board. Go to those school board meetings. Support it. Okay, take care. I'll see you next week. Have a good one. 